DBMS job is deprecated, but you can't do transactional stuff in DBMS scheduler. How do we overcome this? And I will clarify something important first is a lot of people often get panicky about deprecated, thinking that, oh, we're simply going to take the feature away. Deprecated simply means we are not doing any more development on it and we still support it. Deprecated items generally do become de-supported in a future date, but it doesn't always have to be the case. There's been a few things, I'll give you a classic example, uh, long is deprecated. The Varchar facility as opposed to Varchar 2 is deprecated. That's been there I think since about Oracle 6 and is still there to this day. Eventually we do plan to remove such things, so deprecated is that hint that it's going to be de-supported, but not a guarantee that it's going to happen within six months or a year. But having said that, we do have this issue that DBMS job is now listed as deprecated. We are encouraging people to move away from it and therefore move to DBMS scheduler. And before I show the demo, I will talk about briefly as to why. People say, well, you know, why did you, why, what's wrong with DBMS job? DBMS job came around back in Oracle 7. And if you've ever poked around inside DBMS job, you probably would have stumbled upon a routine called DBMS iJob, which is the internal version of the DBMS job procedure. DBMS iJob is effectively how the administrative accounts manage and execute your jobs. And that's why sometimes if you're a DBA, you might use DBMS iJob to forcibly manage things on the job queue. But if you think that through, what that really means is, is that there are APIs out there that allow administrative access into directly into the job queue. And similarly, when the jobs actually run, effectively they're being running as a privileged process, one of these background job processes, to actually execute things on your behalf. As a result, you can imagine that if you don't have the security mechanisms 100% in place, then that opens up all sorts of risks. If people could find holes in that implementation, then you have security issues. And DBMS job has pretty much been unchanged since about Oracle 7.3. Now, to my knowledge, there are no security holes in DBMS job, but the reality is it's a code base, which is now, what, 20 years old, and it's using a mechanism where a process with privileged access effectively downgrades itself to run your things on your behalf. Even without any security holes, I think that's a legitimate risk because you're thinking if someone does find a hole and exploits that, then we're at risk. DBMS job, its implementation is somewhat of a, um, you could call it a byproduct of a, of a bygone era where generally security wasn't the most paramount thing. Nowadays, security is everything, especially for Oracle. That's pretty much our primary focus on every piece of functionality we offer. If it's not secure, it doesn't make it into the product. So that's the background behind we could either, if we had to rewrite DBMS job to guarantee its security and make sure we weren't open to any risks, then why not just port it to DBMS scheduler? And that's why we recommend DBMS scheduler because DBMS job, we're not going to undertake that effort on a 25 year old piece of code. Having said that, let's now have a look at one of the features of DBMS job that is not in DBMS scheduler, which is what creates some of the angst for many people. In order to show how DBMS job works and one of its, one of the purpose, its coolest facilities is I'm going to create a table called T and every time I put a row in there, I'm just going to put in whatever message I pass in and the sysstate so we can actually capture as things are running. And here's a procedure, very complicated procedure called my procedure. It takes in a parameter of M, which defaults to blah, just a piece of random text. It inserts into our table and does a commit. So every time I call my prop, we'll get a row in the table called T. This is how we use DBMS jobs. If we make a call to the routine, we need to provide a parameter, which is the return job number. It could be an appeal SQL. I've just used a variable here in SQL plus. It doesn't really matter. We just need something in which to capture the outcoming job number. So I submit a job. DBMS jobs generally were designed for things that repeat over regular intervals, but if you don't pass anything in terms of dates and next dates, et cetera, this is just asking that job to run just once. I can see I've created the job. Job is 533, you get that from the user jobs table. But if I look at the table called T, which effectively will be the result of an execution of the procedure my proc, there's nothing in there. That job has not yet started, is not yet run. It's only actually when I commit that that job actually springs into existence. It becomes a real thing. And as you can see, my, that job then ran, it ran the procedure my proc, which did the insert into the table called T. And we can see it did it at 17 minutes past nine, 
my time. So that's obviously the standard usage for a DBMS job. You submit a job, commit the transaction, and something happens. And as a result, because I didn't put anything in that job definition in terms of repeat intervals, you can see the job has been removed. It's a one, once off execution, a one off job. Here's probably where DBMS job really earns its keep, the thing that has made it so useful over the last 20 years and still useful to this day. I submit a job called MyProc. You can see it's sitting there inside user jobs. This time it's job 534. I select star from T. It's got the one row from the previous execution at, at 17 minutes past nine. If I choose to roll back the current transaction, my job is gone. So the actual creation of a job with DBMS job is transactional. And therefore, things like this suddenly become possible. I could have, for example, a trigger. So an email, I'm going to have a trigger. I'm going to email when the salary is too high. Every time I insert into the employee table, if the salary is greater than 1,000, I'm going to submit a job which would send an email. Why would I do it with a job? Because obviously email is non-transactional. If I had a trigger like this, which just simply had in the trigger code, if the salary is greater than 1,000, then send an email. Then if that transaction were to roll back, then that salary hasn't been changed. And yet some poor administrator has just received an email saying, guess what, Connor's salary has been bumped up. You need to check it out. They'd go log onto the system and find that Connor's salary hasn't changed at all. So when you do non-transactional things, things like network calls, email, write to a file, et cetera, as part of a transaction, DBMS job was the tool for which you could actually make non-transactional things, email, et cetera, transactional. Also, the advantage here was it was faster. Seeing an email normally takes between, say, maybe up to half a second because you're reaching across the network, talking to a mail server. Doing it with DBMS job submit means it was asynchronous. That, that length of time became taken away from the user. They'd get that instantaneous response. The benefits of being able to submit a job and have it as part of the current transaction are huge. Let's now do the exact same facility with the tool that we recommend you should be using. That's DBMS Scheduler. So the routine is a little bit more verbose in terms of creating a job, but that's a good thing. There's actually a lot of flexibility, a lot of power in the scheduler. Uh, it's got so much more goodies over DBMS job. But in this case, I'm going very, very, very simple again. This time I've got a job called my job. The scheduler actually creates database objects, unlike DBMS job. This actually creates things called, you know, it's a database object called my job. It's a PL SQL block. It's going to run the same procedure and I'm going to run it now. So I've submitted the job and immediately that second row appears in the table called T, this time at 20 past nine. That's the result of the execution of this job. The moment I schedule a job, it's its own transaction because it creates a database object called my job. It's DDL effectively, and therefore it actually immediately runs the job. It's already been committed. You can't use DBMS scheduler as part of an existing transaction, which of course then removes one of the best features of asynchronous job submission. So how do we do it? So option one is to keep using DBMS job. Now, that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but as I said, deprecated is not the same as desupported. And in particular, one of the reasons why I suspect DBMS job will be around for a long, long time and maybe never be desupported, but don't quote me on that, is the following. If I submit this job in 19C onwards, called my procedure, just like I did before using DBMS job, you can see I created the thing called user jobs, once again, you know, 535. So that's there just as a transactional. But if I go look in user scheduler jobs, you can see it actually created a scheduler job as well. It actually created one called DBMS job dollar 535. What we've done, as I said, there was this issue with the age and robustness of the old DBMS job code. So what we've done, rather than force people off DBMS job by desupporting it, is in 19C onwards, whenever you call DBMS jobs, underneath the covers, we're rerouting that and putting it into DBMS scheduler. You can still see it as we saw in user jobs, it still appears there but it's actually now the scheduler that's gonna take the responsibility of running it. So it's our modern code base that's gonna be running it, even though the API was still the old one. So we've effectively managed to break away from the old code base and leverage the new code base without any interruption to your service as a customer. One of the cool things is, 
if I actually go, you can actually see a database object was created. I look in user objects and a database object was created. But if I roll it back, just like DBMS job, it's all gone. This is probably the first and only instance I can ever think of that the database here is exhibiting transactional DDL. We actually put something in the data dictionary as part of an active transaction and we rolled it back and that thing got removed from the data dictionary. So that's pretty huge because Oracle doesn't support transactional DDL, but it looks like it does in this particular case. But the key benefit here is you can call DBMS job and we're actually under the covers rerouting it to use the scheduler. So we get all the benefits of the scheduler, none of the drawbacks of using DBMS jobs, and we continue the ability to have transactional job submission, which is super cool. Option number two, let's say Oracle comes along in 25C, 29C, 36C, et cetera, and says, I'm sorry, DBMS job is toast. You're not gonna be able to use it anymore. My personal opinion, I'd be very surprised if that happened before we added transactional support to the scheduler. You can see from that previous demo that we're already pretty close to adding it anyway. Um, so the, obviously the, the underlying mechanisms are supported. We just have to put the APIs in place to allow it. So I would imagine it, it will come. I don't know, but I imagine it will come. But let's assume the worst case that we ditch DBMS jobs and we don't have transactional support in DBMS scheduler. All you really have to do, and don't get me wrong, it's a little bit of work, is exploit any other transactional mechanism. For example, I could have a routine which actually listens on a queue. So in this case, I've got a routine here called do some job work. And all this does is it sits there and listens on a queue called my job queue. If it finds that, then I'm gonna actually do some work. So in this case, the same as that call to my procedure. It's gonna insert into a message, etc. So because queues are transactional, what I can do is I can create a routine here which will listen on a queue and only when it finds a message on a queue will it actually go ahead and do some work. That is the routine that I'll now put in the scheduler. And in this case, I'm saying because it dequeues for up to a minute, I'll run this thing once every minute. So what this job effectively doing will be constantly running. It'll run for a minute listening for a message on a queue. If it gets a message, it'll do something. If it times out after a minute, It'll exit and the scheduler will run it again straight away. So it's always sitting there in the background, just waiting to do some work for you. Then I create a partner procedure called I want to request some work. And to request some work, I simply put something on that same queue. Using DBMS AQ, NQ and DQ is transactional. So by introducing this queuing layer now, effectively I get to exploit the scheduler in a transactional fashion. For example, I request some work, I select star from T, nothing's there. So those two rows that were always there but from the previous demos are still there. When I commit, that message on the queue has now been committed. The background scheduler job will dequeue it and find it. And then we have three rows in there. In this case, I use the word stuff. So in this case, simply by putting some queue lay interface in there, I've effectively turned my scheduler into a transactional scheduler. Because DBMS job now internally reroutes to the scheduler, I would be surprised if it's ever going to be de-supported. However, I must state, I have, I'm aware of no word on the reversal of Oracle's position in saying that we're gonna maybe undeprecate it. Given that we effectively bypassed the issue we used to have with it, I would suspect we should just leave it. I don't have any official word on that. As it currently stands, it is still deprecated, but not de-supported. <laughs> <laughs>